everybody, Matt from Eastwood here in the Eastwood Garage doing another live tech session for you guys. Uh, if you've never watched one of these before, we want you guys to log on to Facebook, YouTube, or you can also watch on our site. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can join in on the chat. Uh, as always, we have Scott over here on the chat answering questions. Yes, yeah, so make sure you guys ask some good ones so we can get them answered for you and uh, get you taken care of. And if for any of you missed Carlisle, you missed a great show. We had a good presentation of people coming out, seeing our products, and seeing what we have to offer. Let's see some brake lines. Cool. So uh, today we're going to, with it being springtime, a lot of you guys like myself are probably finishing up some winter projects. That means you're buttoning everything up, getting your brake lines done, and you probably need to work on breeding, bleeding your brake line system. Um, so we figured we'd show uh, one of our customer favorites and then also a new product that's uh, going to quickly become one of our customer favorites, I think, with how well it's been doing. Um, so the, the kind of one of our staple tools here that I'm going to show you guys quickly is our Pro Flaring Tool. So the Pro Flaring Tool, if you haven't seen one of these before, um, it's a little different than your normal uh, flaring tool that you would buy, a cheap, a cheap flaring tool at your auto parts store. Um, it's a turret style, so it has um, a removable head on the top here that you can remove. Um, we have a uh, one for AN fittings. And we also have the one that's supplied with it here uh, that comes with all your standard uh, for doing single, double, or bubble flares uh, on this tool. It's, a, it's possible to do. Uh, and it also comes with the dies here. We have the other ones in the, uh, actually in the box there, but I'll show you this one here. So the dies are marked, for instance, uh, they're actually double-sided. So this one that says DIN on it, then this is for doing a bubble flare. You would turn this side. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys first is doing a, uh, a double flare, which is common on a lot of older vehicles here. So you're going to put, and this is 3 16 of course, common brake line size. Um, so you can put that in there like that. We have a piece of brake line here. So we can put that in as well. And before I go too much further, um, actually, you know what, I'll do it on this. So. You can either put it on the brake line itself. It comes with a little bit of lubricant here. You can either put it on itself or you can dab a little bit on the brake line. Um, so you can put it on the die with your finger or you can put it on the brake line and you can put it in there um, and not drop the die. So they also have these little dots so you can make sure if it, you know, last reason to double check um, both of the the, you match the dots up if you want to make sure that you're on the uh, on the standard side here. So you can fit that in. And what I do is I uh, put this here. I usually snug this up so that it'll it'll just hold the brake line, but you don't want to make it tight. You just want to get it so that it's not the dies aren't flopping around in there. Then we have uh, this. We make it really easy so you don't have to. There's not too much uh, skill involved here. Put it to operation zero. What you do is you just push in on it like that. That bottoms everything out. It's going to push the dies back and bottom them out as well. So everything's nice and flush. And while I have the line held, I'll just go snug with this. A little pass snug, I guess you could say. Um, an error that we've seen sometimes, and Scott's probably seen this as well, sometimes we've had guys that call in and you know they broke a set of dies. Um, the dies, if you break or split, that's probably what that is, is you guys uh, may be kind of tightening this too much. I call it He-Man tight. People sometimes just go, you go crazy, you think you have to tighten this down like it's, like it's head studs or something like that. It doesn't need to be that tight. It just needs to be beyond uh, snug. So we're going to go to our Operation 1, 3 16 uh, And if we're doing different sizes, there's a quarter inch Operation 1, uh, there's a 5 16 and 3 8 so depending on what you're doing, you want to start there. Each of those ha kind of have their own one. And we got that snug there. So we're going to go in. And what you do is you just basically you push in and you'll feel it give some. And then it kind of just stops. You don't want to go beyond forcing it. Again, that's what causes over flaring or it can cause an issue. So now without removing the die or anything like that, uh, we're going to switch to operation two, which actually is shared. 3 16 and quarter inch share the operation too for a double flare. So we're going to go in like that. Same thing, but it's not going to push quite as far this time. So you feel it pull, or you push it or pull, and you feel it stop. 
That's it. Don't pull extra on it. If you start hanging on the piece, you're going to actually over flare it and cause an issue. So then we can loosen it. it. Has this quick release here pin. We can flip it up. Take the die out. I'll just set it back in there. Wipe off the grease. And you can, of course, use brake clean or something like that. Um, or you can use our uh, aerosol inject injected cleaner to, uh, to clean that out. And Joe's going to try and get a tight macro shot there. Dang. So yeah, that's, that gives you a nice flare. I mean, I was going you know, pretty slow there to really walk you guys through it. But I mean, you can bang out flares in, in seconds with this. And I don't know if I've hardly ever done a bad flare with one of these. Uh, the tool is so simple to use that it's, it's pretty easy. Um, if we were doing a bubble flare or something like uh, a bubble flare, uh, all there is is one pull. You turn it to the operation one for the 4.75 or 3 16 um, DIN, D-I-N uh, section on here, pull it once, you got a bubble flare. It's that easy. So if you guys are doing more modern cars or you're doing European cars, um, it's even easier than a double flare to do that. So that's the flaring tool. Um, and, and if you guys don't have one of these, you really need to get one of them in your shop. We also just recently offered uh, a similar design, uh, but it's a handheld version now. So it uses kind of the same idea how it works, but it's, uh, it's in a handheld version. So you can find that on our website as well. Um, so that's the flaring tool. If you guys have any questions about this tool or anything, any capabilities, Scott can shoot you some questions. Do we have anything so far? No, we're good right now. You're doing an excellent job of explaining how it works. Man, look at that. It's like I've done this before or something. Uh, so the thing I'm probably most excited about here that we have, um, this is a new uh, line wrench set uh, or bleeder wrench set that we've um, come out with. And if you're like me, it seems like you're always bleeding brakes or, or um, when there's nobody around. Your buddies are not home. The wife doesn't want to come out and help or she's out shopping and you're stuck alone trying to do a brake bleeding. So uh, this thing, it, it's about as simple as it gets for, for bleeding brakes on your own. So what it does, and we have a great shot here that I'm going to show you guys. Um, we had uh, Ryan doing a live when he was ble bleeding, bleeding some brakes on his truck. And you can see you can actually put the wrench right over top of the, um, of the bleeder and loosen it. And as you press the pedal down, about halfway or a little more, um, it, it puts the fluid through. And what the great thing about this is, is that it has a check valve in it. This is where, aside from the wrench, I'll show you guys in a, in, in a second, it has a little check valve built in there. Joe's going to try and, let me get a little closer to you. There's a little arrow on here that helps you take some of the, there we go. Get the glare out of there. So it gives you that little arrow. So that's showing you which direction the fluid's going. So uh, with this wrench set, it, tight, it, it actually has an airtight seal on the wrench on the inside. Don't go away, Joe. So testing your macro skills today. So inside of this, try and turn it here. It might be a little tough to get. There's an O-ring inside here. I promise you there is. Uh, so there's an O-ring inside of here that actually seals over top of your bleeder on your brake caliper or wheel cylinders. So that gives it a tight seal, and then you actually put the hose over top of it, like you saw in the video, and that gives a nice tight seal. So when you loosen this wrench, you can actually uh, slide it and then loosen again, like so and you can loosen or tighten, and it's gonna let the fluid out. So because it has a check valve, super secret tip there, it's not going to let the air come back up into your brake system and cause an issue. Um, so that's what's really great about this. It's a simple little wrench, um, the hose, and this check valve, and you can bleed brakes yourself. Um, even if you are, have a helper and you don't wanna use the, the, this method um, using this, this hose necessarily, the great thing about this is um, versus using a normal, a normal uh, wrench is you're not going to get brake fluid. You can hook a hose to it and you're not going to get brake fluid all over the place like you would um, 
you know, when you're doing it other times. So you can leave this on here um, and you don't need necessarily that valve, but if you're doing it alone, it, it's very necessary. Um, it also comes with eight, 10, or 11 millimeters. So that's pretty much the most common sizes you're gonna come across for the bleeders. Um, there's, it, it's gonna work on the majority of vehicles out there. Uh, so it'll cover everything you need, whether you're working on an older car or you're working on something new, uh, your, your bleeder wrenches are gonna fit that pretty well. So this kit, it's a must have. I'm about to do some brake bleeding on uh, one of my cars I'm finishing up and I'm definitely gonna be using one of these because I'm gonna be bleeding alone, I'm sure. Bleeding my brakes alone. Any other questions, Scott? Sure, uh, referring to the brake bleeder, they say it looks, they saw in the video, it looks like the nut can't come free from the wrench, so you can't lose it. Is that true? Yes, yes, so the, the, the wrench has, and we can probably show here, so on the front here, the little bleeder that's built into the wrench has a little lip on it. And that little lip stops it from falling through here. So you're not gonna lose that, uh, that piece there. So if you're like me, you're working in the shop, you sometimes can get messy. If this didn't have that lip on there, it could definitely fall out. So it has that little bit of play so that you can actually kind of have a ratcheting effect to loosen as need be. I mean, you're only gonna be turning it probably a quarter or half turn uh, to break it, uh, but it does have that option that you can loosen it enough by doing that. But yeah, you, you, that's a good, great question that will not fall off because it'll whip on there. Perfect. Any yep. other ones you got? Nope, that's it. Other than that, you did a great job Sweet. explaining. Sweet. Well, guys, um, make sure you grab one of these wrench sets. Uh, they're really handy. It's something you need to have whether you're restoring uh, a classic car or you're just doing maintenance on your daily driver. This will cover it all and makes the job a lot easier for doing it yourself. Um, this is in the new item section on our website. Um, you can find it right in the link uh, on the video in the comments where Scott probably dropped that for you. Or you can just go right on our website and do a search in the search box and you can find these and grab a set for yourself. So that's all I got for today, guys. I appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're going to show off our, uh, our combination belt sander that we have and show you how handy that thing is to have around the shop. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you later.